What's up, everybody? I'm Eric July, the founder and owner of Riververse Publishing, as well as the writer of ISOM. It has been a while since we've done an update, so I figured this will be a great time to get you all up to speed. But the main focus of this video will be telling you what we've learned since that last update. ISOM number two is currently being fulfilled, and I love that you're doing reviews. It seems many of you enjoy it more than the first one, and the book gives issue one more perspective. Blood Ruth has also become a fan favorite, and Gooding is getting some love as well. But from the end of ISOM number one's fulfillment up until now, a lot has happened. Truly, we are still catching up to our demand. You all know that we spent the time in between campaigns building and moving into our new headquarters. You know that we're our own distributor. We say this all the time and it's very important. And though we are saving a ton of money and headache by not using a 3PL, we still are understaffed. However, our team has already grown a lot in the warehouse and shipping department. Since we're still not there, I'm working in the warehouse for the better part of this campaign. Everybody knows good work is hard to find, but our team is getting a lot more efficient. With more hands on deck and a more efficient process, we're seeing orders go out much faster than ISOM number one, and it'll only increase with more staff. The challenges comes with our volume. To put this into perspective, we've sold over 170,000 individual items with 80,000 or so orders. That's a lot of product that has to be accounted for and a lot of negotiation comes with working with various vendors and suppliers. This is the part of the business that a lot of creative people don't ever consider or they put it off on someone else because they don't want to deal with it. But we handle it all here and I'm proud of my team. ISOM number two gives us a great opportunity to see what our capabilities are and we know where we need to improve. I do want to get our fulfillment time down as much as possible, but let's get to the creative things. As we got the new warehouse, two books were being completed in addition to ISOM number two. That's Alpha Core by Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett and Yaira by the Saska sisters and Deborah Carita. Outside of some minor edits, both of the books have art and colors complete. AlphaCore is finalizing lettering and pre-press since that releases this fall, but in addition to those books, we have other projects in motion. ISOM number three and the finale to the ill-advised art has started Pencils and Ink. Yara number two by the Saska sisters starts Pencils and Ink this month. Chuck Dixon has another unannounced project that starts Pencil and Ink this month. We also are getting the ball rolling on some other projects and we'll keep you guys posted. As you can see, our release schedule is speeding up and 2024 is going to be a massive year for us because we do have bigger books. Don't expect oversaturation. We won't release books just to do it and the campaign format will not be used for every single book. We've already learned a lot creatively. We have a better understanding of how long it'll take us to finish each project and so forth. But if I can be completely honest and blunt for a second, this company is going to really step it up once I don't have to be at the warehouse every day. Everybody here understands that I'm most useful facilitating the creative things as well as the business side. My role should act more as CEO and EIC, but until we get the bodies, I'm having to split that up with warehousing and packing orders. Which brings me to the editorial oversight. Minor errors happen all the time in indie comics, which doesn't make it excusable. It's especially frustrating when you know how it happened. For example, on one of the pages in ISOM 2, there's some added U, and on another, there's a missing two. This is a lesson of always rereading the proof copy. You have to do that. We caught both of these issues on the first proof, but after a completely different edit, the digital proof did not include our first corrections. I'll take responsibility for that as that's what I get for not getting another physical proof because I was so ready to get this to print. But there was one thing that just got flat out missed and that's the ad which was a late addition. Gooding's name is misspelled on the headline. Again, that's on me as I should have included that with the editor's copy despite it being a late addition. Our editors caught the edits that they were presented with. I need to let them do the jobs. So what I've learned is always do due diligence. That should be done regardless of how antsy we are. If we need to push things back to get things corrected, then let's just do that. But those minor errors in ISOM 1 and 2 will not be corrected in the single issues, maybe for the omnibuses or something, but not for the single issues. These mistakes don't get 
in the way of the story and 99% of you didn't even know it was a thing until we told you that it was. But I have no problem displaying our slip ups and they will forever be showcased. We're still a relatively new company. It'll be our way of showing our growth and where we came from. We recognize we do have to be better in this department though. Most of these issues will resolve themselves once I can focus more on the creative stuff and that alone with the business, of course. Either way, I'm excited for the future of the Riververse. We have a lot of comic book material cooking. We also have some things moving with Riververse Studios animation. Perhaps the greatest challenge is taming your expectations when you have all these dreams. Many people would see the money that we brought in and they would either blow it in being way too ambitious or get lazy thinking that they've made it. The key is balance. Be realistic and financially responsible, but also understand that there's risk with anything. Anyway, thanks to you all for being customers. Keep reviewing ISOM number two as word of mouth will forever be our greatest marketer. And that is our latest little update with the Ripperverse. We are hard at work. I'm at the warehouse right now to actually uh, doing our thing. Um, appreciate that continued support as we um, have uh, like 10 days left and the a little over maybe 10 days left in the campaign. You can still get in the pre-orders, even though we're sending out those first orders right now, you can still get in um, as we work hard to get these items shipped. There was one thing that I failed to mention in that video that I wanted to I'll bring up here to you all. Uh, one of the challenges that, you know, you learn a lot about shipping. Obviously, we discussed that in our previous uh, updates where there were some some challenges there. A lot of that has to do with negotiations and everything, getting rates down, trying to benefit, have some sort of benefit to the customers. One of those things that we attempted to do for our international customers that it just didn't work out was um, trying to do the whole duties paid thing. We're really the only ones in the industry that, did, that tried to do that, that do stuff like that at least to our scale. Um, and what I mean by that is having it to where the person that is purchasing the item can see exactly uh, what they are going to be charged and be charged uh, that as far as the duties and, and fees that are going to be associated with that specific item or those specific items. And what we tried to do was have it to where they can treat it as one transaction, pay, pay it, and then there's no extra custom fees or anything uh, the problem with that is that it's that's more technological than anything. There's really only one um, like company per se that uh, has something like that, and they're not really geared for handling our volume. So we we noticed that actually having that stuff act, stuff active on our campaign really bogged down our site, uh, and they learned let's say that a lot about their company. Uh, working with us. So we attempted to give it a shot. Didn't work. Things happen. But either way, uh, we'll keep you guys updated. That's something that we strive to to uh, put stuff out there like this. Maybe it helps. Maybe aspiring, uh, aspiring creatives. And yeah, we hope you got something out of that. But let me go uh, get back to work. I will see you guys later. If you like this video and want to get into a new comic book universe, visit Ripperverse.com. Our first campaign for ISOM 1 hit $3.7 million, and the pre-order campaign for ISOM 2 is currently live. So go check it out and watch the official launch trailer, which is the first animation of Ripperverse Studios.